everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Vedic Living. Today, I want to talk about the chart of Elon Musk. Uh, he has been in the news lately with a lot of talk about politics. He's getting involved in the national stage with a lot of these topics. And, uh, you know, and recently he did an interview on Twitter with Donald Trump. And it's just a lot of um, activity in his life that's going on. Usually he likes to be a little quiet, but I'm noticing he's a lot more in the public right now. So I thought it's interesting to look at his chart and I can promise you that you will be able to see right off the bat why all this is happening in his chart. Before we go forward, I do want to remind you my website, www.vedic-living.com. Make sure you go on there, check out all the information about me and sign up for my free newsletter. I do send out a newsletter every month with a lot of information for the upcoming month, a lot more than what I talk about here on YouTube. So I hope you sign up for my newsletter and get that free information in your inbox every month. Now, let's go forward and look at the chart of Elon Musk. So here's the chart of Elon Musk. Uh, he was born June 28th, 1971 at 7.30 a.m. in Pretoria, South Africa. And I'm looking at his chart right here on the screen while you look at this one up here. And we'll, we are going to dissect it and see what makes him who he is and what is going on in his chart right now. So right off the bat, you know, in, in the beginning, like a few months ago, we did not have his time of birth. But then, uh, you know, now we do. It's 7.30 in the morning. So his ascendant is in Gemini. And he has a sun and Mercury placed right on his ascendant, which is uh, showing us so much information about who he is as a person. Gemini rules communications and networking, and it rules computers and internet and technology. And that's what he is about, right? His interests lay in those areas. On top of that, Sun that is sitting right on his ascendant is the ruler of the third house, which also rules all of those things, right? Technology, communications, internet, all of that. But that's fine. That could mean that he's just working for a corporate company which has to do with technology, right? But that's not the case. He's an inventor. He has um, intelligence that is beyond what you know most people have. And he comes up with very bright, brilliant, and inventive ideas. Why is that the case? The reason for that is the second planet that's sitting on his ascendant, which is Mercury. Mercury is in its own house of rulership, which is Gemini. And Mercury rules Gemini, so it's, it's, it's extremely powerful there. And it is sitting right on his ascendant. And Mercury is the reason why he is intelligent. He's incredibly intelligent. Another thing is Mercury rules um, technology. So, you know, he's not only inventive and intelligent and brilliant. He has the additional understanding of how to apply that to technology. So this is the combination that makes him who he is. And now I'm going to tell you another reason why he is, um, he's got this intelligence that is beyond this world. The reason for that is his Mars, which is exalted in uh, the eighth house. And, uh, you know, his Mars is very special. Mars is exalted exactly at 28 degrees of Capricorn. And notice where his Mars is sitting. It's sitting at 27 degrees, 26 minutes of Capricorn. I mean, that is exactly at its exaltation degree, which means Mars in his chart is very, very powerful. On top of that, it is sitting with Rahu. And Mars and Rahu, when they come together, it's explosive, right? It's called the Angarak Yoga, which, which has got some difficult attributes to it too, because Mars rules anger. So he can be explosive when it comes to his anger and his emotions as well. But on the other hand, Mars Rahu makes a person in intelligent, very intelligent. And it is sitting in his eighth house. And eighth house is the house of otherworldly knowledge. It's almost like, you know, like everybody says about Nikola Tesla or Einstein, things are channeled almost to them. They just kind of get information from the ether. That's how Elon Musk is, because eighth house is the subconscious mind. It's not this conscious frame that we are in. 
it's a subconscious mind. So his Mars exalted with Rahu there, magnifying that energy in Angarak Yoga, is sitting in a subconscious mind where he is getting this information on how to bring up new inventions and discoveries. And, you know, that's the reason why he is so interested in space and outer um, outer realms of space and planets and space travel, because that's all eighth house. So, you know, he has this otherworldly kind of thought process, which is beyond this world. And that's that's the kind of thought process that creates new inventions, because you need to be able to think outside the box. Now, his Mercury sitting on his ascendant also gives him another attribute. It makes him very fast minded. Remember, Mercury, the planet, it's about speed in innovation, but it is also speed in your thinking, right? I'm pretty sure he doesn't sleep much because, you know, with, with Mercury sitting on his ascendant so strong, plus I'm going to come to the 12th house planets, which rule sleep. <laughs> he probably is, his mind is probably racing at a million miles a second, right? He's coming up with all these thoughts and probably not able to shut his brain down, but it also makes him very fast in speaking. If you watched his interviews, you'll notice how he gets real, he talks really fast when he's excited about things or ideas. And that's because his brain is going at a faster speed than his mouth can actually say what he's thinking. So he speaks very fast. Sometimes he's stammering. And that's that Mercury on the, on the ascendant. It's speed, right? Like it's like fast. He probably likes fast cars too. I have to say that with that Mercury on the Ascendant. But, you know, it's brilliant. It's a, it's a brilliant chart of an inventor. And I think Albert Einstein had similar uh, position of Mars in his chart too. I have to check, I think so. But, um, you know, that's the two main attributes. Another thing I noticed is that Venus Saturn in the 12th house. now. Venus does rule relationships, sitting with Saturn. It does show that, you know, relationships are tough for him. He doesn't uh, have a lot of luck with it um, and probably had, and I think he did have a few breakups and such. And actually, Donald Trump has that too. He has Venus and Saturn together in the 12th house. So they have that in common. But um, I do want to say though, um, right now, Jupiter is transiting that 12th house in his chart, bringing him great inventive power and innovation and ideas. So I'm going to come to the predictions for this upcoming year, year for him, because this is a very exciting year for Elon Musk. Okay. Now, another thing that I want to kind of mention is Jupiter Neptune, if you can see in this chart, and I'm looking at it here in my screen, is sitting in his sixth house of health and healing. Health and healing, you know, the sixth house rules, everything that has to do with medicines and innovation with health and healing. And the Neptune there can also mean that, you know, he has the ability or at some point in future, he will play a very important role in finding the cure for some kind of disease or some kind of innovation in healthcare. Because not only is the Jupiter Neptune sitting in a sixth, if you look from the moon in the Chandra Lagna, that exalted Mars and Rahu combination also sits in the sixth from the moon. So it is pretty pretty powerful there with uh, the sixth house energy. So he does have ideas for innovations around health and healing, I think. And that's gonna come out in future uh, as well. I, and I'm thinking that will probably happen in his Jupiter uh, Dasha, which starts in 2029 uh, 20 to, 20 to 2030. That's when I think he will go into some of those innovations because Jupiter, the ruler of the 10th house of career, sits in the 6th house of health and healing. So he does have that nuance with his career that will come up in a few years from now when he goes into that dasha. Now, um, looking at the transits, it's very interesting because I do think, now I understand why he's coming out in the public so much. Jupiter transiting is in Taurus right now, and it is in his 12th house, yes, so I do think that this year there's going to be some endings in his life. He's probably going to close some chapters and open some new chapters, right? That's what the 12th house energy is. But from the moon that Jupiter transiting goes into the 10th house of career and public image. 
So now you see why that transiting Jupiter is bringing him out into the open in the public stage where he's speaking his thoughts and what he thinks about certain things. And he's interviewing presidential candidates and he's out there, right? In the public, that's the 10th house. And uh, that being said, he's also speaking his truth because Saturn is transiting his ninth house of truth. So, you know, that's the karmic kind of tendency to speak your truth and to make your point, to get your point across. Now that Jupiter is uh, transiting and as it transits, it's going to sit around um, the 27 degree mark of Taurus and Jupiter stations there in October um, around 27 degrees of Taurus. And if you look at his chart, those of you who know astrology know what I'm talking about because when Jupiter stations, and remember, whenever a planet stations, it has um, the most strength in the sky, right? It is basically saying, look at me, pay attention to me. So that stationing Jupiter at 27 degrees of Taurus is going to be exactly on his Venus and it is going to aspect his Mars, his exalted Mars in the eighth house. So what does that mean? Eighth and 12th houses are activated. So yes, there could be some difficulties in his personal life, but thinking about his career and um, his innovative power, his brilliance, his imagination, his inspiration, it's going to be through the roof. I think in the month of October, when Jupiter stations at that degree, Elon Musk is going to come up with a brand new invention, something brand new that's going to impact humanity at multiple levels. And it could have something to do with the elections. He may play a bigger role in the elections that's coming up too. Because remember, I've told you this many times in the past, when I've looked at presidential candidates charts, that when you have planets in the 12th house, you usually have a big role to play on the public stage, right? Uh, in terms of foreign relations and things like that. So if you hear him talk, you can, you can see that he's been in the background gathering a lot of research and knowledge about our foreign relations and the countries and the, you know, how the countries work and finances and everything. He's been researching all that. Exalted Mars and Rahu is in the eighth house of research and analysis. So of course he's going to research and he's doing all of that in a secret hidden way because that's in the 12th house meaning, right? 12th house is hidden and secrets. So with Jupiter stationing there in, in October, there's going to be some major thing that's going to come out into the open that he has been working on in his private time. Okay, so maybe he's already been working on this invention, but it's going to come out in October. So that's an important month for him in this year. Now, another important time frame for him is going to be next year. In May, once Jupiter goes into Gemini, during the summer of 2025, Jupiter in Gemini is going to transit his sun and his Mercury on his ascendant. That is another time, I think, in the summer of 2025, when he's going to come up with another invention or discovery of some sort, which is going to shape the world, right? Because these are groundbreaking things we are talking about. Um, and I do think he's going to, you know, play a much bigger role in the public from now on, too, because you know, with the eclipse energy and everything, his chart is incredibly activated right now. So no wonder. So that is what I wanted to share with you about Elon Musk's chart. And I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, sound off in the comments what you think. And I'll see you next time with the predictions for September.